the Beagle join the clan. Roxy made it clear who's boss. <laughs> Jennifer is an artist. She noticed early on that Roxy had a peculiar penchant for possession. She would reach over and take my art supplies, and I'd always tell her, this is mine. In Roxy's big hard head, the phrase mine is a call to action. Fighting words. You say, is this mine? Are those mine? And she would instantly growl and let you know that it's not yours. It soon became Roxy's favorite game. It didn't matter what the object was, whether or not the dog wanted it, she would still crouch over it and she'd still take possession of it. The proof is in this video made by Justin. Is that my tomato? Uh, give me my onion. You give me that cockroach. The first time when you see a dead cockroach is, you know, and the dog immediately crouches over it. She took ownership of Justin's toolbox. Am I? She even claimed Zoe for herself. <laughs> but if you really want to send Roxy into orbit, toss her an orb, as in anything round. Yes, that's Roxy's personal air compressor. The sound alone sends her into a salivating tailspin. She knows that I'm inflating something, it's going to be round and it's going to be fun. We used to get her started with exercise balls. But at 20 bucks a pop, the big bouncing spears were deflating the barber's budget. I think we've gone through over 30 exercise balls. So what we had to do is come up with a cheaper alternative. Balloons were much easier on the wallet. And for Roxy, so much more fun. She knows balloons means destroy. There's one closet that we keep balloons in. She'll go to the closet and she'll either jump up on it or she'll sit there and she'll wait for one of us to come and get a balloon. Justin exhales, releases a high-pitched squeak, and Roxy is off to the races. This is Roxy's Christmas gift. A box full of, what else? Balloons. <laughs> months pregnant. She tried pawing my stomach, trying to lift my shirt, thinking I was hiding a little ball. No doubt, Roxy will lovingly lay claim to the new baby barber when the little tiger arrives. But for now, Roxy is the baby of the family. Roxy is one of the most loyal pets we've ever owned. She's a perfect first child for us. But is Roxy perfect enough to wear this week's crown? That is dog of the week. We wouldn't want to burst her balloon. They make us laugh. Smile. And sometimes wait. Oh yeah, that's great. They are our lovable loser. It looks like a case of puppy love. This little guy is going to share his lollipop. At first, they go back and forth. But the puppy is about to get his final lick. And it's going to hurt. <laughs> yup, the monkey really sucker punched with our lovable loser. <laughs> Zoro here has a new mask. But this one has no eye holes. Zoro loves sports. But now he's literally lost his head over soccer. His owners are having a ball. But they don't want him to hurt himself. They put down the camera and help him pull his head out. Finally, Zoro unmasked. He's a lovable loser. Leave it. Anna and Duncan look like the models of good behavior. Look at me. Angels of obedience just waiting for the word to each grab the treat at their feet. Duncan. Good boy. 
boy. They're both purebreds, but one of them is a real little shit suit. Okay. Watch Duncan on the right dash for Hannah's dream. Yeah, Hannah, yeah. Scramble to get his own. <laughs> Trying his best to leave Hannah with the toy. A lovable loser. Most of the time, Duncan and Dylan are best pals. And these dachshunds sure look like two of a kind. But inside their heads, you will find a world of difference. Nick and Heather Carboni have tried for years to measure the mental gap between their two lovable doxies. Duncan, in a nutshell, is a sweetheart that really doesn't have lights on. Nobody's home. Dylan is mischievous and jealous and attention-seeking. Duncan has no ability to make up for his lack of intelligence. If he were cut out into the wild, he would not last more than five minutes. Ten-year-old Duncan was a gift from Heather's parents. He was right in the letter. He was the last one that was there when they got him. And he was just a little off. Nine-year-old Dylan arrived a year later. I first realized that Dylan was a lot smarter than Duncan. I think even before Dylan came into the picture, because it didn't take much to be smarter than Duncan. The comparison to the alpha male Dylan may seem unfair to poor Duncan, our lovable loser. But Nick has plenty of evidence on tape. That for example, one of the first things people teach their dog is how to sit. Dylan figured it out fairly quickly in life. But after 10 years of trying, Duncan still does not understand this simple command. No matter how hard anyone tries to teach this sweet pup, he still cannot match Dylan's immediate response. Sit. Good boy. Duncan, can you sit? No? Dylan, you got this. And when he does sit, it's because he has to scratch his ear, not because he understood the command. But hey, the Carbonis will take it. It's possible that Duncan is not dumb and lacks confidence. I think he lacks both of those. He has no intelligence or confidence. Make no mistake, Duncan is still a much-loved member of the family, right up there with Dylan. I think what it is about Duncan and Dylan that makes us love them so much is that they're so unconditionally loving. Our dogs are our family. We don't have children, and they're sort of our children, and we spend all of our time with them, and they're a big part of our life. But Nick, a college physics professor, wanted a scientific approach to compare the intelligence of their two dogs. He and Heather laid out a square of soda cans on the floor, like so, and put Duncan in the middle. They wanted to see how long it would take him to escape. The result, pretty much as expected. You know, buddy? I believe what's running through his mind is, I live here. This is my new home. He just resigned himself almost immediately to, I can't get out. There's nothing that can be done. Why don't we just make you it? Good. There you go. Then they put Dylan in the same situation. <laughs> Very interesting. And just in case you're thinking Duncan was somehow unable to jump over the can, think again. He is a great jumper when he remembers how to do it. I have seen him jump onto the couch from a standing position many, many times, and I know he can jump a distance much higher than those cats. Then Nick and Heather up the ante. They build a maze of cans with their dog's favorite treat at the end of it. Place your bets. Who do you think will get to the treat faster? Duncan's up first. Prepare for a long afternoon. Look at it. Think big. Right there. See? Now, 
It's Dylan's turn. <laughs> it would seem that, yes, one dog is indeed smarter than the other. Hey, Buffy, he's like, don't like me. He goes on licking frenzies and he can't stop. Oh, yeah, that's... And that look of pure love in his soulful eyes is guaranteed to melt your heart before driving you nuts. He will just lean back and stare at your face, and it's like there is nothing going on. The conclusion seems inescapable. Duncan is not college material. We often ask ourselves what's going through Duncan's little mind, and we have no idea. We don't really know if anything's going through his mind. Maybe he's thinking about finally winning something. A doggy degree for baddest of the week? That's gonna take us a while to figure out. They lurk at night. Chihuahua breezes right through the doggy door. But for Ari, this one's a sticky situation. The poor Vishla makes squeezes and squirms. She struggles to get traction on that tile floor. But her sticky paws finally pull her through. <laughs> the neighborhood bulldog bully wants his turn on the skateboard. <laughs> and he's taking it. <laughs> the guys don't seem to mind. Oh my god. In fact, they kind of admire him for how he handles the turns with those sticky paws. <laughs> The cat burglar with a reputation that spans his neighborhood and the internet. Just ask his owner, Leslie Newman. T-shirts, trousers, cardigans, pajamas, paintbrushes, sponges, pants, socks, lady songs, lady bras. I could go on all day long. Robin Hood, except from taking from the rich, she just takes from the neighbours. You might say it's normal for a cat to bring home a found object now and then. Not Dennis. You gotta see his heart to believe it. This is about six months worth of items that Dennis has brought home. Over the last two years, this sticky pod bandit has brought in enough loot to start a good-sized thrift shop. This is just a very small portion of the items that he's actually brought home. Every night, whatever the weather, Dennis is busy raiding the neighbor's yards and clotheslines. But he doesn't keep anything for himself. He brings it all home to Leslie, usually around 2 a.m. when she is sound asleep. He's screaming at the side of the bed that he's brought you something home. And then you have to respond. And if you don't, he'll carry on until you do get out of bed. You have to acknowledge Dennis. He won't have you ignoring him. It's just not happening. Dennis was adopted at six weeks old into a house with eight other cats. But his thieving ways began when he turned six months, the day he was first let out on his own. Items would appear. We had a lot of cats. We didn't know which cat it was. Finally, Leslie and her husband put up a security camera outside the cat door. And what they saw on the tape blew them away. Just absolute shock that it was him. He didn't seem the type. Thought he was a little angel. He's not. Then they had 
neighbors, like Stuart Lucas, searching for his missing stuff. There's been times when I've come out to play and the ball's gone missing, or the shin pads or the goalkeeper's gloves, they've all disappeared. It was by chance that Sir Leslie was saying that Dennis had got in the habit of bringing stuff back into the house. And it just kind of made me think, hang on a minute, is that ours? By now, it's a fact of life. If you live in the same part of town as Dennis and something goes missing, you know where to go. We usually come to the same conclusion. That would be Dennis. I suppose you've found one of Scott's footballs in here. This the one. That's the one. <laughs> That's Scotty's as well. Dennis's turf encompasses nearly a half mile radius around his home. It's a target rich environment for this ambitious four pod thief. By now, it's hard to find a house he hasn't hit. <laughs> He's a busy boy. He's got things to do. He's cleaning up the neighborhood. It's gotten so bad that Leslie started listing all the stolen items on a Facebook page named after Dennis. Now you can check online before you head over to her place. Takes a lot of time up. He needs a full-time secretary. Sometimes neighbors are too embarrassed to show up. Where is the man who claims his own underwear? Janet next door. She's come and asked if Dennis had her husband's underpants. Then there was the time Leslie found women's underwear in the living room. Her husband swore it was something the cat dragged in. Obviously, I was questioning that until I checked the CCTV and proved that it was Dennis who brought them home. And he was quite relieved by that. Sometimes Dennis brings home things that he can't even fit through the door. Or he leaves stuff sitting in the driveway. Daring daylight robberies are also common. Most of his items are after dark, but during the day he has brought a few items home. And all of a sudden he appears behind you with something in his mouth. No one has a clue about what motivates Dennis to steal the way he does. But he has brought the neighborhood together in an odd way. And in the process of stealing their socks and underwear, he's stolen their hearts as well. It's nice to have something that's actually a little bit fun, light-hearted. I'm all in favor of it. I think good luck to him. But will luck be enough for Dennis the Menace to steal this week's crown for baddest of the bad? They're candy fiends. And cupcake kleptos. They're what we call the ultimate sweet tooth. Lacey absolutely loves anything sweet. That even includes dental floss. The whole roll of it. <laughs> is it Mincy Fresh? But Lucy's owners want to make sure their precious pup is okay. So they pin her down and pull it out. Got it. Can we go on coke? Luckily, most of it was just wrapped around her sweet tooth. Sierra is a champion hunting dog. But today it's his sweet tooth, not his nose, leading him to those freshly baked muffins. There's been a muffin disappearing mystery in the Chandler house. So they set up a camera. It doesn't take long. One by one, Sierra hunts down all five of them. Muffin mystery solved. Sweet tooth satisfied. <laughs> Like so many disasters, it starts out as a simple experiment. Natalie Hart wants to give Jack her pit bull mix free run of the house while she's at work. Jack's smart. He's been through two obedience classes. He was the head of his class in both classes. And Natalie was going to put Jack to the ultimate test. I had taken the garbage out because I knew that would be tempting. And I had gone through and doggy proofed the house. I thought it would be okay. Jack is left out of his crate, free to roam with his running buddy, Redford the Chihuahua. Jack and Redford get along amazingly well. They are so good together. 
here. But make no mistake, Redford is the little enforcer in the house. He knows that Jack isn't allowed on the bed because he's too big, and he doesn't let him forget it. Get off the bed. Even with Redford in charge, Natalie worries she might find a thing or two out of place when she gets home. But no. What she finds is this. So this is what I came home to today. It's a blender. And a coffee maker. The fish tank was even pushed out. Everything that could possibly be knocked onto the floor was knocked onto the floor. Things that, like, I have no idea why he would even be interested in. No, it was just a disaster. It may be the most complete and utter trashing of a kitchen ever accomplished by man's or woman's best friend. All the kitchen utensils, the recycling, all the small appliances. Everything. Everything was on the floor. The microwave oven is nearly a goner. The microwave does not go there. One of the things that really scared me was that the microwave could have fallen and crushed little Redford. I could have come home to a chihuahua pancake. And get this. Jack even managed to turn on the stove. But he turned the stove on. So somehow Jack had gotten up onto the counter. One of the burners had actually been turned on. That was just really scary to know that my house could have burned down. So where are the dogs? Well, Redford is safely tucked away in his little bed eating candy. And the author of all this destruction? I wonder who made this huge mess. He's in bed, too. The biggest sweet tooth on four legs. But Natalie thinks Jack had some help in his kitchen rampage. She points the finger at Redford. Redford might have been the mastermind behind the whole thing. He was just eating those Smarties as though that was the whole purpose. But Natalie's fiancé, Court, isn't so sure about that. I think that maybe mastermind is a bit of an overstatement of his intellect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a part of his plan. That could be. That could be. Natalie wants to put this mystery to an end once and for all. So she installs a security camera linked to her iPad and leaves him alone in the kitchen again. And it all happens within 10 seconds after she pulls away. <laughs>
Well, he's just sitting on top of Jack's enjoying an almond, not worrying about the, all of the crumbs that are now in Jax's fur. Jax just seems pretty content to let him sit there and do it. Wally is the pint-sized bundle of fur who keeps Shannon Apple and Kate Harris on their toes at their Maryland home. The bad times can be a pain in the butt, but most of the time when it's just us here and everything's calm, he's a great little fella to hang out with. And Wally is best buddies with Jax, their big Bernese mountain dog. He not only uses Jax for a dinner table, he also stores his nuts in Jax's fur. Jax is the one Wally likes to hide all of the nuts in, in his fur, because he's got a lot of fluffy fur. When it comes time to brush Jax, it's sort of like shaking a tree branch. Good job. Wally first came into the house as a tiny days old infant in deep trouble. He had fallen out of a tree during a severe storm, and a friend brought him to Shannon and Kate. If we hadn't adopted Wally, he would have died that day and that he fell out of the tree. The storm that was going on was so intense that he would have definitely not made it through the night. Thus began a round-the-clock intensive effort to raise the baby squirrel. We had to nurse him back to health, and we had to feed him with an eyedropper every four hours. The two big dogs in the house bonded with him instantly. Both Jax and a mastiff named Briggs are gentle giants around Wally. Shannon and Kate had hoped to return Wally to the wild as soon as he was able. But things didn't work out as planned. We wanted to release Wally in the spring, but he had not yet weaned off of milk, and he wasn't at the appropriate amount of weeks to take care of himself. And by the time he was old enough, it was already winter. They tried leaving him outside the following spring, but he never made it past the deck. He never wanted to leave the deck, so anything scared him, he'd take off right back into the house and run into his room. So now, Wally is a regular member of the house. The same house that he is forever chewing to pieces. Here are some of Wally's destructive living room behavior. Is the edges of our tables. Edges of our windowsills. This is one of the sticks that he messed up. We left it out one night and he just went to town on it, chewed it all up. He's gotten a hold of the corner of the fish tank and... Underneath the fish tank, he's taken a couple good chunks out of the base. Wally's calling card is everywhere. Things were getting so bad that they finally caved in and gave him his own room. And lots of stuff to chew on inside. He's got tree branches in there, he's got dirt to play in, he's got bedding. But Wally still has the run of the house most days. And when he runs out of room in Jax's fur, he will store nuts anywhere and everywhere. Anytime I move a towel, a sheet, there's usually a nut under there, depending on all of the nuts in the pockets and the hoods of the sweatshirts. He hides it in the dog's food bowls. He hides it in the cat's litter boxes. And sometimes under the rugs in the kitchen, which we end up smashing, because we don't know that they're there. When he's not burying nuts, he's stealing cookies. They ripped the entire package open to just to take one and run into his room and hide and eat it. And Wally is an alpha squirrel when he has run of the house. He's pals with the big dogs, but Joey the cat and Riley, an elder cockapoo, get no such respect. Wally, he does chase Joey the cat around quite a bit. People always want to know what it's like living with a squirrel. But Kate's father, Lee Harris, who lives next door, isn't one of them. That's because he's also the landlord of the house where Wally lives, or what's left of it. Even though I live right next door, the less that I know, the better off it is for Wally with me. But it's the only home that Wally has, and that's the way it's going to stay. I love Wally very much. He's a good little pet. He's very sweet. Oh, nuts at all. I just want to make sure that his life here is the best that it possibly can be. But will Wally be able to squirrel away this week's title of baddest of the bad? If it goes missing, we'll know where to look. <laughs> On this week's Bad Dog, we've seen a monkey give a puppy a painful lollipop. <laughs> A kitty gets frosty in the fridge. And a pup go postal. But which will take special delivery of the crown for this week's baddest of the bad? Is it Roxy? Oh, my candle. The overly possessed.
obsessive bulldog who refuses to share, is that my car keys? Anything. And that will stop at nothing to destroy anything left. Oh my god! Anything that's circular, she'll get. It'll be destroyed within minutes. Even if it's hidden in a box. <laughs> Roxy is all of muscular energy. You say something that she keys in on and she'll just explode and she starts tipping stuff over and, you know, running sideways. So, you know, we try and keep her calm most of the time indoors, especially around little kids and stuff. And uh, she's actually more like a, a little kid than a dog. Uh, she does a lot of things that kids do. Roxy also has a lot of other strange habits. Roxy's odd habits are... She has a bunch of odd habits, I think. Yeah. But a few of them would be she loves being high up on things. She's definitely not afraid of heights. Um, she loves vegetables, weirdly enough. Every time we drop any vegetable on the ground, it's gone. She loves carrots. She likes broccoli. Um, she loves destroying piles of things. Also, if, if you have anything that's a little pyramid around, she will walk right through it and destroy it. She gets very excited when we come home from shopping. Um, she has to have a toy. You know, every time we go out, we always get her something, whether it's something to chew or something to break. So we, we discovered this trick of taking an empty bag and taking one of her old toys and stuffing it in the bag. And then, you know, hey, look at what we got. So <laughs> the dog goes nuts over an old toy, and it works for us. The dog loves climbing up on things. Uh, you always see videos of bulldogs. They like jumping on things that are moving. And uh, we have to really watch it because, you know, sometimes it's a, a, a real vehicle that's moving, and she'll want to jump up while we're moving so we we have to be very careful never do that again roxy, no. roxy loves anything that's around i mean if it's a balloon if it's a ball you know uh even a pregnant lady believe it or not you know we have to watch it because you know the dog thinks that she's got something that she can play with so um, she loves little kids uh loves little kids she likes knocking them over you know um, she likes bowling with little kids but um if anything is round, she, she wants to jump on it instantly. It seems that the list of compulsive behavior is virtually endless. Roxy hates sleeping uh, early at night. When she's asleep, she hates waking up early in the morning. She hates getting up early in the morning. She loves flowers a lot. She loves to smell flowers. We can't walk her unless there's absolutely no flowers. Um, she loves the water, interestingly enough. She can't swim, but she loves the water. She loves running, she loves balls and round things. Anything that's circular, she'll get. She loves crunching things. Whenever we do give her something, it, it'll be destroyed within minutes. Nothing survives. Oh my God, Ray! You But does this obsessive balloon popper have what it takes to be the baddest of the bad? But it beat Duncan, the adorable doxy that always seems to have a dumb look on his face. Look at it, right there. See? This cute little guy can't figure his way through a maze to his favorite tree. Come on, buddy. Even when he's shown how it's done. We often ask ourselves what's going through Duncan's little mind. We have no idea. We don't really know if anything's going through his mind. Duncan and his brother Dylan hold a special place in owner Heather Carboni's heart. I had just uh, gone through a breakup, and my parents were trying to cheer me up. So they know they know that I love mini dachshunds. I always have, ever since the first mini dachshund I met when I was a kid. Um, so they came home with Duncan to surprise me, and then a year later, uh, same same guy. We broke up again, and that time it was final. And my parents went out. They said they were going to the beach for the day. And they came home, and they had this little tiny two-pound dachshund, and I was like, they got me another one. Heather knew immediately that there was something, well, special about Duncan. When I first realized that Dylan was a lot smarter than Duncan. I think even before Dylan came into the picture, because it didn't take much to be smarter than Duncan. But once Dylan came into the picture, and he was just so much easier to train. Go get it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's year 10 with Duncan, and we still don't have sit-down. We had sit-down before Dylan was a year old. So it was pretty clear who was of the superior mindset right away. 
if I had to say which of the two dogs I was closer to, I'd put myself right in the middle. Uh, I have the kind spirit that Duncan has. Dylan has a sort of nasty, mean side. But I'm definitely, I hope I'm not as stupid as Duncan. But is Duncan's intelligence, or lack thereof, reason enough to award him the crown for baddest of the week? Or is the baddest dog actually the greatest cat burglar ever caught on tape? This is about six months worth of items that Dennis has bought. This Dennis the Menace has hit every house in the neighborhood, stealing anything he can get his sticky little paws on. A bit like Robin Hood, except from taking from the rich, he just takes from the neighbors. None of the neighbors are quite sure how Dennis continues to pull his crimes off without any witnesses. Well, I'm not so sure, to be honest with you. I mean, we don't really know how he's actually getting in. We're not quite sure whether he's coming in over the gates and, and, and coming in that way, or whether, indeed, he's doing a little bit of fence hopping. You can see that um, Leslie's house is only a couple of doors up. So um, my suspicion is that he's actually uh, jumping over the fences and uh, coming in that way. But then what kind of puzzles me is how he's managing to get some of the larger obje objects back over the fence because they're not uh, not exactly light and easy to carry so it's a little bit of a mystery and because uh, everything he does happens at night nobody's actually seen what it is that he's doing and how he's actually getting in and taking uh, taking his prey back so to speak dennis insists on showing off his haul when he gets back home no matter what time of day or night it is you have no choice at sort of two in the morning when he's screaming at the side of the bed that he's brought you something home, then you have to respond. And if you don't, he'll carry on until you do get out of bed. So you have to get up, praise him, sort of acknowledge what he's brought home, and then you can get some sleep again. You have to acknowledge Dennis. He, he won't have you ignoring him. It's just not happening. He also has a special knack for getting to things he may want to pilfer. It's easy for him. He, I don't know how he manages it, but he can cling on to anything, whether it's metal, concrete, wood. He's fine. You know, comes to ladders, he can climb a ladder, go up and down the ladder, no problem. He's just got a knack for climbing. He'll find a way if he wants to get up there. Is this klepto cat bad enough to claim our crown for first of the worst? This week's baddest dog, the biggest sweet tooth. This adorable food fiend tore up an entire kitchen to turn his bedroom into candy land. Everything that could possibly be knocked onto the floor was knocked onto the floor. It was just a disaster. It was remarkable how much he got into things. He didn't he didn't destroy anything, luckily, but I mean he got into everything. He got into the recycling was all over the house everything that was on the shelf was on the floor everything that was on the counters was on the floor um, the coffee maker the the microwave was even pushed like right to the edge of the counter the blender was on the floor pieces of furniture were moved like he had pushed we had like an island in the middle of the kitchen he had pushed it all the way against the wall but jack does know the difference between right and wrong jack's smart he's been through two obedience classes and he was the head of his class in both classes but maybe all parents say that i don't know um but he knows, I and mean, he knows all kinds of commands from all the basic stuff down oh, that's so good. to more complex things. He'll, uh, like, he'll wait when we feed him. Both of the dogs do this. Um, they wait until you say okay before they go eat, which takes some self-control. So he is a very good obedient dog, usually. Usually a good dog? Maybe. This time? No. Does this kitchen-destroying rampage make Jack our baddest of the week? Let's not forget about the little guy who drives everybody nuts, Wally the Squirrel. Wally gnaws on furniture and almost everybody's nerves. Everybody, that is, except his best buddy, Jack. The Bernese Mountain Dog that doubles as Wally's personal dining room table and storage facility. Jack is the one Wally likes to hide all the nuts in, in his purse. He's got a lot of fluffy fur. But Wally will also seemingly hide his nuts anywhere and everywhere he happens to feel like. Anytime I move a towel, a sheet, there's usually a under there, kind of open the windows. There are nuts in the windowsills, there are nuts in the dogs. 
we had to remove all of our clothes from one of the areas because we were having all, all of the nuts in the pockets and the hoods and the sweatshirt. He hides it in the dog's food bowls. He hides it in the cat's litter boxes. He hides it anywhere he can find it, and uh, un sometimes under the rugs in the kitchen, which we end up smashing because we don't know that they're there. However, there is a method to Wally's nut-hiding madness. In Wally's room, he has several buckets of dirt and hay and bedding, and there's a, an aquarium, and he also has dirt in. And that's mainly where he wants to hide his Brazil nuts. He maybe instinctually knows they need to soften in the dirt, and he'll get in there and he'll, he'll start digging and throwing dirt all over his room and all over the floor just making a general mess. And there's something about cell phones that seems to really gnaw at Wally. I don't know if they put off some sort of vibration or something. He can feel that he has destroyed probably six or seven cell phone cases that I've had. Um, my current cell phone has a lot of little nicks. Uh, he goes after the tablets, and I have a tablet case that he's pulled apart. He'll go after your cell phone while it's in your pocket and try to dig through your jeans to get it. He just has a thing for electronics. Wally also likes to pester Joey, the cat of the house. Wally well, tries to play with Joey, the cat, and I'm, not, I'm pretty sure he just wants to play, but he comes at it so quickly and so, with so much force it scares Joey. And Joey will take off running down the basement, and he can't always find a place to hide because Wally's smaller and Wally can get into all of the little areas that Joey has found to hide from the dogs. So, the pet that steals the crown for this week's baddest of the bad? It's got to be Dennis, England's most infamous cat burglar. Just absolutely shocked that it was him. Didn't seem the time.